Oh, have you seen this? Where is it? Oh, yes, here it is. Yes, this letter was printed in the Sunday Times, London, 28th of September, 1969. Shall I read it to you? It was headed, Skinheads in Skirts. We are two girls who, according to your article, are skinheads. We don't think you know much about us. Round our way, the boys wear big boots, like you say, called bother boots. We're called bovers, mods, peanuts, and a variety of other names. The boys have crops, like the boys in your picture, not crew cuts, and braces are worn with their Levi's. We do work hard, unlike the hippies. I say we because we girls are mods or bovers or peanuts, as well as the boys. If you want to see real, clean, decent ones, come to Bookham. We don't like long hair, hippies, flowery clothes, and anything which attracts attention. As for us girls, we wear skirts that are long by today's standards. Most of us have crops, hair that is short on top with long back and sideboards. We wear maxi cardies, stretch lace blouses, and we don't wear makeup anymore. We're just out for a good time. Miss Jane Skinner and Chris Webb, age 15, Great Bookham. <laughs> Billy was a queer, pilly sexy hippie. He wore gear, frilly hairy zippy. More hair in the winter, less hair in the summer. His mac was black, scarf immaculate, tied loosely, not interfered with promiscuity. Beads that went all the way to eternity, especially on his trips around 3.30, did Billy the queer, pilly sexy hippie. Then one night he went to troll the dilly to spend a penny and met a skinhead Kenny. Kenny was one too many, a skinhead who hated plenty. But Billy loved his puritanical gear, his boots, his braces, his hair and something else which was quite rare. Kenny was a doer, pimply silly drear, whose only joy was knocking down a queer. So the moment his beetle-less brows rose in frenzy, Billy gulped, zipped up, and looked less trendy. The crew cut Ken and all his men stomped out in rounded style. Their boots as small as size being ten, they had to walk in Indian file. Billy ran up the stairs to the street and suddenly found he was surrounded by feet. What was night became the day that lovely Ken didn't want to play. Instead, he looked like some bad trip, not at all like any hopeful kip. Which made poor Billy realize that peanuts just don't vitalize. Thud, thud, socky. Thud, thud, thud again with the magnificent ten. A thing in the face. Grab hair quickly. Snip, snip, snip. Till all was prickly. Flat. Choke just like mine. What? Oh, poor Billy. No more hat size nine. But stop. Halt. Go back. Rerun reel. What's that between Ken's clammy hand? A load of hay? Familiar material? A wig. Detached from yellow band? No, no. I must be Ken. Underneath this golden mass is a head as bare... As bare as my ass. And what's this now? Bearer still, peeping out in another thrill from torn blouse and button spill. A pair. A pair of skinnies. Cool, what a pair. She's a bird. She's a bird. A bird. <laughs> So Ken became a less dour, silly, pimply, drear, cause Billy certainly was no pilly, sexy, hippie, queer. <laughs> ¶¶